get in the car in the morning and it's kind of a gamble because you don't know what's going to be there today. But the omens are good. After meticulously checking the car's range, the team have decided that their worries were mainly down to paranoia. So now, happy that the SR0 is working well, they can relax and enjoy the drive. That vastness you just cannot imagine and you cannot really describe it either. It gives you an impression that you can't really imagine beforehand, that you can't tell anyone about, that you can't see actually or can't feel in a video. If you're there, it just overwhelms you. And even though there's nothing, it's, it's, it's something very big. You just have to look at the landscapes and you just get the, the feeling that you are very far from the world. You, you can really feel you're at the southernmost place in the world. It's an unbelievable feeling to finally get really close to the finishing line. We're very close and I'm very proud of that. There is definitely a different feeling on our shoulders now than there was a few months ago when the bottom of the world just seems so far away still. But you look at it on a map now, it's literally just a few days' drive away. There's still so much, so much that could go wrong. If someone has a rope... You can see just over here that there was a massive pothole in the road. Alex just swerved to the right to avoid it. You can see the skid marks here. Span back here, just off the road. Unfortunately, it appears at the moment that there's no damage. What we just need to do is get the car back on the road, do a quick inspection of the suspension, and then uh, hopefully carry on driving. No, not yet. Wait there. Yeah, it broke here. Well, yeah, that's front right shock absorber is gone. Rear one's gone as well. It seems like it's two shock absorbers gone, which we have. It means there was quite some impact. Uh, I'll just have to take it apart and see what see what's wrong. It's two shocks and uh, ripped diffuser, all of which we can live with, which is good news when you're in the middle of nowhere. It's not raining. That's a very nice day. We'll fix it. Be on the road. I don't need bolts. It's missing one. We're supposed to do 600 kilometres today. We don't really have a choice about that because there's absolutely nothing for 400 kilometres. Oh. Two hours later, they're heading east again towards the Atlantic Ocean. Watch for the potholes and uh, hope that nothing breaks. And by noon the next day, they reach the Atlantic and a friendly garage. Let's get hooked up. Possibly the three most productive hours we've ever had. We've got our two broken um, dampers fixed with the most incredible job ever. Good as new. We've now got a full charge, 260 miles to our next location, and uh, no problems. Bang on time, bang on schedule. Good roads mean a swift journey south to Tierra del Fuego, but it doesn't last. There is a 100 kilometer section of gravel road to conquer worse than anything they had before. Fitting uh, challenge at the end, a nice little one to keep it exciting all the way to the finish. Uh, SR0 does not appreciate gravel because it's the ultimate vibration test. But we're not out of the gravel yet, so I'm not going to say too much. been holding a pneumatic drill or something for hours. That's beautiful. After proving their racing car can rally, it's time to prepare for the last day's drive to Ushuaia. Ask for the front to be taken off to have a look at that because better check everything. Yeah, paranoia is settling in, you know, only 200 kilometers left, and uh, now we have to check right. it. Better nothing be broken today. Yeah, 100 kilometers of pounding gravel road is enough to 
loosen some big bolts. We know, but this car can take it. This car can take anything. We all had this, this dream, this idea, and we all worked at it so hard. We were so persistent in what we did and invested so much time and energy and, and resources that we made it reality. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to follow their dreams like we have so far. But at least we had the opportunity and we followed it through. Worse would be to have the opportunity and to miss it. Well, I've been going through my mind, all the memories from, from the past two years. So many, so many experiences we've been through and so much has happened, it's just incredible. Still nervous. <laughs> Yeah, right, all nervous excitement, you yeah. can see the town now, it's not far, RGE comes to Ushuaia. That's it, entering Ushuaia, we made it. There must be like a sign, end of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is it, this is the big one. A culmination of two years of tears, toil and sweat. Well, we are finally at the end of the world. <laughs> and we're here, I can't believe it! Get ready to party, boys. We've shown that electric cars, especially a prototype electric car, can conquer the world's longest and hardest road. Anybody that says electric cars cannot stand up to the normal rigors of driving or the normal distances that a petrol cars have to do, you are just wrong. It's been proven wrong. The technology is there, all we need is the willpower. This has proven it. And I don't think any of us could be happy. It's probably the proudest moment of our lives. From Alaska to Ushuaia, 14 countries. 26,000 kilometers and 70 driving days. A world's first for an electric car. To see more, go to racinggreenendurance.com. One series that has proved very popular with viewers around the world, possibly including you, is Racing Green. Now, this is about the group of students who designed and built their own electric car, which they then race from Alaska down to Tierra del Fuego, down the Pan American Highway. Now, on our programme, we had a bit of a debate. Could we call Tierra del Fuego the most southern point of the world, or would that be seen as ignoring the South Pole? Well, that's for you to decide. Let's join the team again now as they head on their journey, and this is a preview of what we'll see this weekend. The team will be staying in the observatory's living quarters, La Residencia. This is James Bond territory, featured in the film Quantum of Solace. This is incredible, like a little mountain oasis in the middle of this little tiny dome at the top of the desert. And we're staying here. It's, amazing. it's just like in the Bond movie. That's, that's like, I don't know, it's quite a big thing yeah. for some reason. <laughs> Makes you want to become an astronomer. After lunch, there's a press call three kilometers further up the mountain at the telescope site. <laughs> That's Christmas for engineers, how you would call it. How cool is it to be driving around this very large telescope? Who gets to drive that car around one of the most advanced institutions around at the top of the world? You know, it's kind of, kind of how we're feeling at the moment, I think, on top of the world. Ah, now when I was a student I had an old Citroen and it never went that far. 
But anyway, you can watch the boys' grand finale from Buenos Aires uh, on Sunday afternoon at half past five in that city and, of course, around the world at all the showtimes you'd expect, bbcworldnews.com slash schedules. That series, Racing Green, is coming to an end, and so must we. The difference is we'll be back next week, powered by our own small electric vehicles onto your screen. Let's leave you with one of the most popular videos on the BBC News website as Tiny took his first steps. Goodbye. <laughs> the real Shanghai, in association with intercontinental hotels and resorts, with over 60 years' experience connecting our guests to what's truly unique. The river is 68 miles long and uh, actually one third of the international trade comes into this river and uh, almost all the drinking water comes from this river. So this is very important for Shanghai. Actually this is Puton side, another side of the river. It's like building everywhere and like uh, the highest building in the Shanghai, 110 floors, you know, it's amazing here. You know? It's like the bond is there, you know, the old building, and this is the best combination. I love this city. I am very lucky. I live on Bora Bora. For me, the most beautiful place on earth. I know all the remote islands, magic places, where if you know the families who own them, you can spend an unforgettable day. I work at Intercontinental. I am happy because I can share local knowledge like this with our guests so that when they go home, they have special stories to tell of my people and my islands. It's one square mile is like a big, big family, and that's the point about this place. Poverty, yes, but you can get something positive. There's a community spirit. Yes. You feel together. Yes. And that's the nice thing about this part of Kailicha. This week on Newsnight, Portugal. Will billions have to be spent on a new European bailout? And the British author Michael Morpurgo goes into Gaza to see for himself how children experience an adult's war. Join me, Gavin Esther, here on BBC World News. We're more than 150 metres below sea level. This place is so atmospheric. It's even got its own private language. I headed out into the countryside to meet some of the Kikuyu militia. Being followed by a small army of excitable children. Which I think generally is always a good thing. That vastness you just cannot imagine and you cannot really describe it either. It gives you an impression that you can't really imagine beforehand, that you can't tell anyone about, that you can't see actually or can't feel in a video. If you're there, it just overwhelms you. And even though there's nothing, it's, it's, it's something very big. You just have to look at the landscapes and you just get the, the feel. You look at it on a map now, it's literally just a few days' drive away. There's still so much, so much that can go wrong. You can see just over here that there was a massive pothole in the road. I like to just swerve to the right to avoid it. You can see the skid marks here. Span back here, just off the road. Fortunately, it appears at the moment that there's no damage. What we just need to do is get the car back on the road, do a quick inspection of the suspension, and then uh, hopefully carry on driving. No, not yet. Wait there. Yeah, it broke here. Well, yeah, that's front right shock absorber's gone. Rear one's gone as well. 
Seems like it's two shock absorbers gone, which we have. Means there was quite some impact. Uh, I'll just have to take it apart and see what. See what Feeling that you are very far from the world. You you can really feel you're at the southernmost place in the world. Well, it's an unbelievable feeling to finally get really close to the finishing line. We're very close and I'm very proud of that. There is definitely a different feeling on our shoulders now than there was a few months ago when the bottom of the world just seemed so far away still. You get in the car in the morning and it's kind of a gamble because you don't know what's going to be there today. But the omens are good. After meticulously checking the car's range, the team have decided that their worries were mainly down to paranoia. So now, happy that the SR0 is working well, they can relax and enjoy the drive. 